wait, wait. You gotta say your famous phrase. I don't know what that is. Just, what's up? Dick. Damn it, boy. <laughs> Damn it, boy. Welcome to another episode of Hot Street Garage. We're actually back here at the shop, and I've got this guy here, and his name is Jim Bob. No, Steven. Steven. The discussion is, what did we decide on it was gonna be? Track cars versus... No, driving your car or show car. No, track car, show car. Show versus go. <laughs> Function over form. Function over form. All right, anyway, so, okay, where to go? Show versus go. How do you feel about cars or show cars that don't get driven, that, that are built to the nine, that don't have dyno numbers? Don't go to the track, don't drive on the street. Trailer queens. I'm a biased person. Uh, I don't. I, I don't get the satisfaction from looking at a picture of a car, or looking at the the niceness of it. Does the car drive? Does it move? Can we drive it? It has sticky tires on it. Do those sticky tires get drove. Uh, the coilovers are high end. Do they get used? Big brakes. Does the car ever stop? Yeah, he he's talking about my car. <laughs> <laughs> I do like to drive my car. From time to time, out on the mountain roads, I just, you know, I don't like to take it there all the time because it can be dangerous, it can be, you know, it can be a little sketchy, but I do enjoy doing it. We're supposed to do it tomorrow. As a person who has somebody who has invested a lot into a car that I would say kind of looks nice, it's not the greatest car in the world, but it looks nice, I don't get that upset or angry if I get a rock chip or a scratch or, but I have, I have dented my fenders on driving on the, the mountain, um, and I was a little upset by that, but I mean, it is what it is, you know, pulled it out. I'm a biased person. I, I, I'm not a show car person, I never have been. I get my thrills from driving. My car looks terrible. I have clear coat missing. I have bacon fenders for thicker tires that get used. Bacon fenders? Bacon fenders? Or bacon fenders? Uh oh, yeah. That's the, the stance boy. I'm starting to, I'm starting <laughs> right. to get the bacon fenders. What do you enjoy or get out of your enthusiasm towards your car? Because you've built your car. Let's let's be honest. You 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 purchased the car. You swapped the car. You removed parts. You've added parts. You ever rode on a roller coaster? Yes. Pretty thrilling. It, it can adrenaline be, rush. It can depends on which one that one in Dollywood boy. <laughs> you put certain parts on your car to get that adrenaline rush. I want to drive my car. I like the feeling of driving the car. It has to have sticky tires. It has to have big tires. You know, your guard's going to get roughed up doing what you love. Especially where we're located. For Our sure. roads are rough. Yeah, they are. But that's why my car's not slowing down. There's sure. nice roads around here that I like to take advantage of. Personally, I've learned to really enjoy the roads. I'm like, wow, I, we actually do have some gyms here. As much as... As much as like I've kind of complained about living here, and we don't really have a lot of straight flat roads by any means, but then if you kind of get out of the city, you find some really extremely fun, nice, amazing roads. And you guys may have seen the video where we go on the mountain where I'm behind Steven. Now let's talk about this because your car is set up for basically mountain driving. So which means you have, uh, what is your suspension setup? Coney and ground controls, Coney struts. Definitely adjustable is the high box springs, ground control sleeves, full hard race bushings, ASR big 24 millimeter in the rear. It's just set up for a certain type of driving. So, all right, you've got the car suspension wise, tire wire set up for driving on mountain roads. I've got my bushings replaced. I have Tain Super Street suspension, which I love, but it's good suspension. The car seems to do fine. Yes, it really does. But the big difference, they got the same tires, but the biggest difference between our two cars would be the engines. I've got a K20 and you've got a D15B, but there are times when you're simply pulling away from me. This is a testament to where power is not everything. No, I don't have to have the biggest motor out there. I, I would actually rather have the smaller motor. I like being the underdog. Right. It's, it's more fun. What would you say is the advantage of your car versus the disadvantage my car has? Even though it's got the K20 and the same tires, good suspension, I would say what weight? I think weight, weight distribution. Uh, you have to be easier with the throttle. My car, I kind of have a, a term for my car. It's literally second gear to the limiter. I'm on the limiter, eight grand, 8,500. The car is screaming. I am working that car. I am here. I am, it, it is a party right. in that driver's seat. You're more calm, you're way back. You know, third gear, 
what would your attack five six thousand yeah, I would say I'm usually between third and fourth gear trying Your to car's a lot more comfortable looking while you're doing the same thing I'm doing. Right. I'm just straining a lot more power-wise. Yeah, high, high strung. And the motor does it well. Right, but we're probably, it's probably safe to say we're probably applying the same amount of power at times, if that makes sense. Even though I'm in third gear at, say, yeah. 4,000 RPM and you're in second gear at 7 or 8. You can take a Miata. And it'd right. be the same deal, and the Miata has probably less than my D series does. Oh yeah, and it could walk us both. Oh, I'm sure it can. I mean, because that's just one of the advantages that a Miata has, just that simple weight distribution. The you know the rear wheel drive. So it doesn't take a lot of power. Right. It doesn't need power. It all it needs to do is stick to the road and turn. All right. So our cars are set up for what we would call what not just mountain driving, spirited drive, spirited driving, but we take turns. We're more focused on turns. I think America has a whole thing about everybody generally thinks when they're thinking racing or building a car, they're, they're generally thinking about drag racing or street drag racing, where it's like, I want the most power and I want it in a straight line and go. I want to go as fast as I can, as quick as I can. Exactly. In all fairness to a lot of people out there, they live in places that have those roads, that straight, flat, well-maintained roads, because boy, let me tell you what, Florida's definitely got some beautiful, straight, flat, well-maintained roads, whereas Tennessee has beautiful, maintained roads, but they're like long, sweeping right. turns. We get those tight little... It's very easily accessible just to go up the mountain. When I say go up the mountain, it's a 30, 45 minute stint, right. hour tops. And it's a, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so you also have autocross. Autocross is parking lot. You're doing parking lot speed. My car is barely at the limiter in second gear. It's a slower experience, but it's more technical and more precise. Clemson Sports Car Club, Clemson, South Carolina. Or if they have a Facebook, yeah, Clemson Sports Car Club. And they do, they do those events. Even David Patterson comes to those events from time to time. Yep, he was there at the last one I was there at. Lately, they've been getting like rained out. So yeah, we the just, past couple events has been rain. Yeah, so we're supposed to go to the Mountain tomorrow, so the video will be out very late because we'll have to get back and then I'll have to edit it. But we are trying to get set up for the best uh, shot for that. It takes me four hours if I take Asheville. Oh wow. I can make it. The video will be out very late. <laughs> probably two, three in the morning. Now, the thing is, is let's see, you know, drag racing is probably the heartbeat of America next to NASCAR. Oh, yeah, especially in the South. Yeah, exactly, and Florida too. And there's like, drag racing is awesome. And one of the things I really like what they do in Florida is they call it like street safe, where they, they actually, race on a drag strip from a roll. I know Zosh goes like like that. Half stuff. Well, it, it's a quarter of a mile, but what they do is they, they, they roll, and then they're supposed to, I guess, be at a certain speed by the time they hit the light. Right, yeah. well, that, that, to me, looks really awesome, because, you know, drag racing, a lot of people ask me to take this part of the drag strip, and I kind of want to, but after you take your car to the drag strip a few times, it just yeah, all the front and everything just starts to feel loosey-goosey. It feels just, more abused. Yeah. yeah. Even though it's... You know, say for that car, nine ten second car in an eighth of a mile. It it hurts for nine ten seconds. Yeah, you're you're stretching out a mountain run over. I, I mean, I can do a or ten like fifteen minutes. Yeah, you're doing just as much stress as I am, but I'm doing like fifteen minutes then. I used to have an EK hatch back in 06 and I built an LSV Tech, and I used to go to the drag strip every Thursday and run times. And I would come home from work, and I would uh, strip all the in rear interior out because it was an EK hatch. And then I would drive to the drag strip, and I think consistently I got nine threes, nine twos for Greer, yeah. for Greer, yeah, and for the eighth of a mile track. If you've never been to the drag strip, there's something so fun about pulling up to that light. And your, your nerves are just, you know, jumping. You're so the experience, ready to experience. Especially in a southern drag strip. Yeah, the Our experience. local drag strip, it's an experience. If you're from the north and you come down, you have to experience a southern drag strip. We have two local ones. They're both a blast. If you've never been and you've never been on a drag strip, it's just the experience is like, it's such an adrenaline rush because you get up to the light, you're like, okay, okay, okay. You don't want a red light, you pull up because you got the two sets of lights, you pull up, you you're get in there, nervous. you're super nervous, you get in the first gear, you're like, okay, don't mess up, don't mess up, you get in the first gear, you get ready to go, and then you see, you know, yellow, yellow, green. I mean, but it's, it's fun, and then, you know, because here you pay seven bucks, and you can go as many times as you want. All night. All night long, till about, yeah, it's like from 6 p.m. to 9. Yeah, 6 p.m., yeah. How do we feel about cars that are built that don't do any of that stuff, that don't drive around in the city, that don't really... Show cars? Yeah, show cars. I mean, like... I'm okay with a show car, but if it's only going to be a show car, don't put a sticky tire on it. Don't waste it. That money could have gone elsewhere. I know it's the it's the, it's the scene points. It, it's, it's the, the looks. 
uh, it's gotta have sponsors are trying to yeah it's gotta product. have the best of the best and sometimes right. the best of the best isn't a regular all season tire right but I, I'm not a big fan of making it look like it can do something and it never do it yeah I'm not trying to say anything I'm probably gonna get a lot of shit for this but you see that far more on the west coast than you do on the east coast that's for sure but I think that's because you know the west like California has so many laws they have they can't even really drive a lot of their cars you know, just down the street right either because you know it's not legal or it may get stolen or that particular you know, show car is too low it should be said that as far as the west coast is concerned it's a very different world We've got far more of a population and um I, I will definitely say that the the police presence is a different type of thing i think that you get a little bit more of a attitude here maybe sure. no I'm, weed's legal in California is what I'm trying to say. It is not here. It ain't cool here. Get the out of the car. It's get, I wish they would legalize it just because it's so stupid. Just to shut everybody up. Dude, you're in jail for what? Oh, I had a bag of weed. It's a oh, plant sure. that's legal <laughs> like 500 miles away. It's like, it's so stupid. You guys out there, are you really that concerned with, you know, what a show car does and, and what it represents and what, what it's... Like, does a show car do anything for you guys in terms of this? Like, I know my car is, I get a show car, but... Your car is a very good example of a southern show car, and it obviously performs well. It drives. Dude, it like, drives. Albert Marty is another example. Works JDM. That thing is a beautiful car that rips tater chips. He gets on that car. He gets on that car. Like, And I'm just saying, like, California does have some great stuff. Don't get me wrong. At the Chronicles meet with uh, La Tommy La, I, he asked me what's better, West Coast or East Coast. And I, and I basically told him the same thing. I'm like, stuff is definitely nicer out on the West Coast, but I think that's just because it doesn't get driven. It doesn't get beat up. Whereas here, it look nice longer. Yeah, yeah. And the weather's better there. Sleet, snow. Uh, hail, dude, we get hail damage like a mofo out here. It's a season. But there's nothing, don't get me wrong, like where we live is in the spring and fall. God, it's beautiful. Yeah. The show cars can look nice because that's what they do. They show. They, they're, they're there for looks and for pictures and for publicity. True, but I think that there's a little bit more to it. Like the California scene isn't just about show. They're not just, show. I mean, they enjoy the cars, don't get me wrong. But I've seen a new movement on the West Coast. But just for fun, guys, that, uh, La Tommy Law rolls with like I, I have a lot of respect for those dudes because they keep those cars so clean so clean yeah. and beautiful like there's nothing like and that example driven. and they're driven you know and that's just I think that's what anybody wants any automotive enthusiast wants to see that I think the saddest thing is when you see a beautifully built car it doesn't matter how much money is dumped into it innovation execution the of new details that you've got into that car you want to see it move you want to see, it's not like you I like the car it looks great does it ever get driven like it makes big power does it use that big power yeah it's got a big brake kit does it use it this is what kills me about it it's like one of the things you do see is you'll see certain cars hit the show scene which is fine but what they'll do is they'll redo that car they'll like you know redo the car completely new color new everything but it's like before you go and redo the car take that thing out on the track and beat it up you know what i mean like go ahead and use the parts use the parts tear it up then redo it like i think enjoy it that's a big thing missing those builders out there that kind of build their cars but then again this is kind of an argument but who knows i don't know probably making people pissed sorry <laughs> I, I just think that I like my car. I've always actually sold my cars off. If you're new to the channel, I've actually had almost 17 cars on the channel since it started. And that was really to kind of keep things going and keep things moving for the channel. But this car, I've probably held onto the longest and done the most with. Done the most with. I'm not really in a place where I want to move on from it. I think you get your kicks both ways. It, it obviously yeah. it made it to Ibok. So it was in a show. You drove it to that show. Yeah. And you drove the local roads. Almost a 1, thousand, 1200 mile round trip. Yeah. So, and the yeah. week before was it a mountain? Yeah. A week before, yeah. So I've, it's the same so thing. it can be done. That's why I'm probably one of the biggest dudes I respect out there is uh, Daniel Stoichesco. I think that's how you say it. Vasily Garage. Obviously his integer is kind of breaking the internet right now because he's been working on it for months. He's completely documented the whole build on Instagram. And then right now he's out kind of um, driving around and he's planning on going to the Eibach meet in uh, California, which is just super impressive with because not only in, in his videos, he said, you know, 
even though he went to all that trouble to make that car so clean inside out and underneath he's like this is gonna get beat up we're gonna beat this car up you know it's gonna get left yeah that's why he wrapped his front bumper like that makes total sense to me if you if you clear wrap your front bumper because you're gonna have it out there on the streets being like Ugh. like that dude you you're the man that's yeah. that's brilliant oh, yeah. i get it you want to keep it clean because you put so much effort in it right you know clear wrap that but you want to enjoy the car as someone who is an enthusiast with passion i could not sit here paint a bay swap an engine put these sticky tires on and not go rip it down the street I don't care. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to be out there breaking laws and going to jail, or, or I'm not trying to be out there, you know, being king of the streets. But I will go out on a drive by myself. You know what I'm saying? It's a very expensive. It's a very expensive build to let sit there. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I just don't. I think part of the execution is actually going through with it, and I don't think you go through with it by letting it sit. Any final thoughts on this? Build your car the way you want it. If you're gonna build it to look like a track car, try it out. You'll love it. Drive it. Don't just throw expensive parts on it to let it sit. I, I personally don't see any fun in that. Me neither. Drive your car. So what he's saying is the same thing that Law Tommy Law says, which is, you know, don't listen to others, build your car for yourself, which I completely agree with 100%. I don't care that people make fun of me for, oh, you got a show car, not a race car. I built my car to enjoy it. I, I'm not trying to be the fastest guy out there. I'm glad you've done both. Yeah. I'm super proud that the car has been in a nationally known show. And that you also drive it. Yeah, and uh, I can daily drive it. That's why AC is going to be next there. And it got to be in the David Patterson's review video, which I'm super proud of. Thank you, Dave. You know, don't listen to other people. Figure out what you like. If it's drag racing, track racing, autocross, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, D series, B series, K series, whatever you want to do. Just make sure that you you keep yourself safe. Don't build a car for for Instagram likes, scene points. I guess do it for you. Enjoy the car. You have a vision in your head. Do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. I think it might be a little late because it's going to be of us driving on the mountain. Are we going? Yeah, we're, we're going. going. I mean, unless it pours rain, we're going. So, yes, please keep a lookout. I promised a video on Friday, but it may not get out till super late Friday or Saturday, just depending on what time we get back from the Montan run and how long it takes me to edit. Thank you guys so much for watching. Click like, click subscribe. See you in the next one. Peace out. Keep on living your dreams. And quit beating your meat in the street. <laughs>